Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a man named Gilbert, during a trial. He gets an 18-month prison sentence for check fraud. The judge throws him in prison. However, he escapes from prison, and crosses the Canadian border after six months. During his flight, he attempts to obtain work, in order to survive. He applies for a job as an ice cream seller, where he must complete a form and attach an identity card, but he doesn't have one. He notices a beggar at the end of the road. He goes up to the beggar and buys his identity card for $22, and gets called Robert from there on. He gives the ice cream vendor his id. In the evening, he goes to a chapel that has tourist lodgings. After many knocks on the door, a woman named Andrea finally opens the door. She lets him stay the night there. He starts selling ice cream the next day, and starts making some money. However, luck is not on his side, the company goes bankrupt. He goes to a bar to unwind, formally losing his job. The place is owned by Tommy, a gangster and loan shark. Tommy is currently a police target as well. Since the police lack sufficient evidence, they have difficulty apprehending him. While leaving the bar, Gilbert runs into a well-known police officer, Snides. He's in the bar to spy on Tommy, who has always been his objective. Coming home, he notices Andrea and asks her out on a date. Some months later, he's moved in with her. When he returns home, he reads a newspaper item, the American government's efforts to track him down. He is concerned about this, and plans to discuss it with Andrea. While she is using the restroom, she has a scared and joyful expression on face seeing the pregnancy test results. She wants to convey the good news, however, she is compelled to back down, after learning of her husband's plans to leave town for a few days, on business. When Gilbert arrives in Vancouver, it turns out his departure was solely to fool the police after him, as well as to look for a job. Applying at multiple places, no one, however, accepts him. In the midst of his anguish, he notices a vehicle withdrawing money from the bank. From there, the seeds of his malicious plans begin to grow, especially after calling Andrea and learning that she is pregnant. He enters the bank without much thought, and observes the entire room, from the location of the cameras to the security guards. He then enters a store, and borrows some clothes, under the guise of an actor heading to an audition. He returns to the bank disguised as a security guard. He goes to the bank manager, and inquires thoroughly about the bank's security, as well as seeing the camera server room. After gathering enough information, he disguises his voice, and calls many employees. He also dismisses a number of security guards who are on duty. Not only that, he also learns how to produce and apply silicone skin. During the lesson, he steals a silicone nose. The day of the robbery, he camouflages himself, determined to do the first robbery at the Royal Estate Bank. He walks right up to Jessica's table, and hands a piece of paper, don't scream. He demands Jessica hand over all the money in the drawer, pointing a gun that is behind his coat pocket. Full of fear, she hands over all the money in the drawer. But the problem is that Gilbert doesn't have a pocket to keep the money he robbed. Jessica puts it in a small purse she has. Gilbert's disguise is almost blown away due to the slightly peeling silicone nose, and he rushes to put it back. After finishing, he returns the clothes he had borrowed, and goes to the bathroom to change. There, he moves the money into a suitcase. He then rushes to the airport, where he encounters a new problem, he has to go through x-ray, and the money will be discovered. He immediately moves some of it into his underwear, and returns to the inspection area. But unexpectedly, every domestic flight is not x-ray checked. After he arrives, Andrea is waiting for him. They head to the new house bought by him earlier. He again lies to his wife about his job so far. He claims to run the family business, so he can choose a new home for them to live in after marriage. Elsewhere, the police are interrogating victims of robbery. A detective named Hoffman thinks that the gangster Tommy has been the robber. Snides confronts the police commander for permission to arrest Tommy, however, they can't proceed. With a heavy heart, they go on a mission to catch Tommy. On the other hand, Gilbert needs substantial capital to carry out even bigger robberies. He goes to Tommy's place to make a deal with him, and points to a bank across the street. He will rob that bank in three minutes. If he can do that, he will borrow $10,000, and pay back at 30% interest for five months. So he goes to this bank. Moments later, he disguises himself as a construction worker, and enters. He returns from the back door with some money, impressing Tommy. His robbery action is getting bigger, robbing several banks in the same way, disguising himself in various ways. He always takes domestic airplanes to move from one city to another. From there, Gilbert becomes better known as the Flying Bandit. Until this time, he has robbed 36 banks. 
The robberies enable him to buy cars and other luxury items. Some of the proceeds of his robbery he keeps in a safe. Besides that, he also has the opportunity to join the flight club of the rich. When he pays off his debt to Tommy, he suddenly gets an offer to commit an even crazier robbery, robbing a jewelry store. On the other hand, Snide's operation has been approved by his commanding officer. They will get a stream of funds for the operation to catch the most dangerous gangster leader in Canada. Snide's names this operation Project Cafe. If the operation is successful, all members will be given promotions. The team keeps tabs on Tommy's movements, and anyone who has dealings with him. Two of his right-hand men are the first targets they would catch, Bishop and Dave. Likewise with Gilbert, who enters into police surveillance. But the police still have no information about who Gilbert really is. At his place, Gilbert is surprised by Andrea, who is in the room. Gilbert's pile of money is scattered on the bed, and she asks where that much money came from. He reveals he got it from robbing banks. However, she asks him to prove if he robs without hurting anyone. So in the morning, he again robs a bank, and is witnessed by his wife. There, she is fascinated by his skills. But she looks worried about his condition. Moments later, he returns and brings the loot. At home, she asks him to promise some things, including not getting caught and someday, he will have to retire from this job. Next, around Tommy's bar, Snides can be seen lurking from a distance. Gilbert comes there to meet Tommy. The two again plan to rob a jewelry store. Tommy orders Bishop to accompany Gilbert during the robbery. Gilbert goes to the toilet, Snides immediately follows him. He also warns Tommy that sooner or later an arrest warrant would be issued for him. Snides washes his hands, suspicious of Gilbert, because he still has traces of silicone glue on his face. They call all the costume shops that stock the disguises. At night, while Snides is resting, he suddenly receives an emergency call from the police station. The police have caught a drunk driving a car, the man is Dave, Tommy's right-hand man, who eventually confesses everything about Gilbert, the mysterious man. Dave reveals Gilbert changed his identity to Robert, and is known as the Flying Bandit. He also says Gilbert will commit an even bigger robbery. With the information, Snides immediately heads for the location of the robbery. He is getting more and more excited about investigating this case. Starting from interrogating the shopkeeper, who provided used clothes that Gilbert borrowed, to reporting to the local police that there would be a robbery in the city. He asks for help in placing several police officers to oversee all the banks in the city. Meanwhile, Gilbert and Bishop carry out the action, and disguise themselves as camera technicians, not noticing several policemen are stalking his movements outside. Gilbert asks the shopkeeper to put all the jewelry in a bag, while Bishop keeps watch by the door, who sees Snides moving towards the shop. They immediately save themselves from the police chase. However, Bishop's weapon is left there, and is used as evidence. The police continue to chase them. Fortunately, the uniform they are wearing is also worn by several other people, which makes the police quite confused. Snides is no less cunning, he sets off the fire alarm, so that all the mall visitors panic. He orders his men to chase the two when he spots their position. They continue running towards the exit at the rear, and Snides loses them. Later, Gilbert calls Andrea to hurry and pack up, as they will be leaving soon, and Bishop is back at Tommy's bar. When he gets home, he sees Andrea have her water break. He immediately takes her to the hospital, their child is safely born. In the meantime, Gilbert's house gets raided by the police. However, the house is uninhabited. Unbeknownst to them, Gilbert took refuge somewhere, and with Tommy's help, he gets a new house. Police investigate the weapon that was left in the jewelry shop. Gilbert spends day after day raising his child. Andrea gets pregnant with their second child. Suddenly, Tommy comes to see him, and they talk on the terrace. Tommy asks about Gilbert's next plans, to get him back to robbing. However, Gilbert refuses. After Tommy leaves, Gilbert immediately notices his dwindling savings in the safe. However, Andrea disapproves of the plan to rob again. The next day, while she is still asleep, he leaves, and writes a letter to her, inscribed with his current location. After she wakes up, she doesn't realize that her husband has left. She hears the phone ring many times. She picks it up, it is from Snides, asking where her husband is. She says he is not home. Next, they call all the airports one by one, but to no avail. Accidentally, Snides reads an advertisement in a newspaper, one of the domestic airlines had escaped his watch. His team rushes to the destination city of the airline's flight route. Elsewhere, in a hotel room, Gilbert is preparing his plan. However, he suddenly gets a call from Andrea. He lies again about his plans, and just asks her to pick him up at the airport at 5. 
he returns to carrying out the action as well as the robbery he had done before, which he did perfectly. After his suitcase is full of money, he leaves the bank. Changing his clothes, he makes an emergency call, to see if there had been a robbery at the bank. Unexpectedly, several people wore the same clothes as him when he robbed the bank. This leads to the wrong arrest by the police. He takes advantage of this to escape. When he is looking for a taxi, he sees a policeman interrogating a victim of wrongful arrest. Gilbert is confused why no taxi is passing there. It turns out all the taxis had been diverted to another street. Next, Gilbert spots a car for sale. Without thinking, he buys the car, and drives away. Snides arrives at the scene of the robbery and shows everyone a photo of Gilbert. One of the police officers says he saw the man fleeing in a car. Finally, Gilbert arrives at the airport, and he makes it through the metal detector. However, the airport had information about Gilbert on the wanted list. The airport contacts Snides, who initially asks to abort Gilbert's flight, but Hoffman suggests letting him go, and catching him when he lands. Agreeing, Snides and Hoffman immediately fly by helicopter. After Gilbert's arrival at the airport, Andrea picks him up there. But at the same time, police cars surround. Gilbert gets arrested right in front of his wife and child. At the police station, he is questioned by Snides. Andrea is also summoned. She is disappointed with him, because he hadn't told her his real name so far, and ultimately divorces him. Later, Tommy visits him, and reveals it was he who told the police where Gilbert lives. Gilbert is found guilty of committing robbery with a firearm, and sentenced to 20 years in prison. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.